Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I'm Heidi Kalish, BirchWorks Executive Recruiter that focuses on data science and analytics role within financial services. Today, I wanted to talk about some of the top trends I'm keeping an eye on this year, my predictions for how they'll shake out, and how they might affect both data scientists and analytics professionals in financial services, as well as employers. We'll be talking about R and Python usage, SAS, the Center of Excellence model, embracing unstructured data and alternative data sources, as well as financial services professionals becoming more well-rounded, the demand for hands-on managers, the evolving H-1B situation, opportunities in investment analytics, and our emerging industry spotlight on cryptocurrency and blockchain. According to data gathered in our annual salary and demographic reports, you can see that the financial services industry is the top employer of predictive analytics professionals and also employs many data scientists, second only to technology companies. With such a significant portion of analytics and data science professionals employed in financial services, I thought it made sense to take a look at some of the trends on the horizon, especially through this lens. One trend we are seeing is that R and Python usage will continue to increase. Um, it's no secret that many financial services organizations are still using legacy systems and tools like SAS. More recently, however, we're seeing more financial services firms moving their data science and analytics teams over to R and Python. Taking a look specifically at tool preference within financial services, you can see that although SAS still holds the top spot, Python has been making gains in recent years. Um, taken together, R and Python captured nearly 60% of the votes. And rarely do I talk to a candidate these days that is only using SAS. Banks and other financial services organizations looking to land top data science and analytics talent would be wise to adopt newer tools. Since lack of access to newer technologies and tools is the common pain point we hear from our financial services candidates that are on the job market. In fact, one of the top responses I get when I ask a candidate why they are looking is that they are feeling stagnant in their current role and would like to find a position where they are using more cutting edge technologies and tools and are answering interesting business questions. Our second prediction that is related to the first is that junior SAS experts will become increasingly harder to find. Um, a deeper dive into our survey data shows a clear trend of early career professionals strongly gravitating towards open source tools like R and Python. We've seen numerous financial services organizations searching for and really struggling to hire junior SAS experts because most data scientists and analytics professionals are rarely learning SAS in school. When we handed our survey data to data scientist Howard Friedman to see what he could find, his analysis revealed that tool preference shifts most dramatically at the 10-year mark. But you can also see how drastically things are changing for those just coming out of school with zero to five years experience. If someone does learn SAS in school, it tends to be very school specific. Uh, for example, if one of their professors used to work for SAS or has ties to SAS, rather than the widespread university adoption necessary to produce enough junior SAS experts to meet the demand. Next, we believe the Center of Excellence model will become more attractive to candidates in financial services. Whereas previously, data scientists and analytics professionals in financial services organizations might remain siloed and focus on a specific area of analytics, for example, only tackling analytics supporting credit risk functions, we've noticed more companies adopting the Center of Excellence model, 
which centralizes professionals on the data team and allows them to touch a variety of specialties within data science and analytics. Strong talent tends to be motivated by the desire to tackle interesting problems. So adopting a more centralized model can increase task variety and make opportunities more appealing to candidates. Sort of along these lines, we've also seen private equity firms finding talent for all their companies. Rather than each company hiring separately, the private equity firm sort of amasses talent in a centralized way and then can disperse them as needed throughout the firm's businesses. Um, as an example, we just spoke with a potential new client earlier this month that is a private equity firm. And they said they're contemplating developing an internal analytics group that they can use as consultants for their various companies. Another trend we're seeing is that more financial services firms will embrace unstructured data uh, and also alternative data sources. We're predicting that even more financial services firms will expand their data science capabilities by integrating more unstructured data and alternative data sources. Pursuing cutting edge tools and technologies is, is not only important for retaining top talent, but it's also becoming more necessary to keep pace with the competition. Many of our clients are looking for quantitative professionals that can be innovative in their use of data and in how they find new data sources, and they need people that know how to wrangle that data and make it usable. Next, data scientists and analytics professionals in financial services will become more well-rounded. With the Center of Excellence model exposing professionals to different aspects of the business and also more firms embracing unstructured or messy data, uh, we're predicting these two trends will combine to encourage quantitative professionals to become more versatile. More financial services institutions are integrating approaches like machine learning and deep learning into their data science teams, and this is encouraging analytics professionals to expand their skill sets. Although it's still possible to be a credit risk analyst and only do that, we'd caution professionals that the longer you spend specialized in a single area, the harder it may be to transition to something else if you decide that's what you want to do. Analytics professionals looking to shift into data science positions have numerous options now, and learning more tools and techniques makes you more marketable. Uh, online courses and certifications through places like Coursera are a great way to add more tools and techniques to your toolkit. Another trend we're seeing is employers preferring for managers to stay hands-on. We've pointed this out before, but now more than ever, companies are looking for data science and analytics leaders who remain hands-on with the data. Especially in smaller or expanding teams, um, many financial services organizations nowadays are wanting leaders who can be a player coach, someone who can mentor the growing team and get their hands dirty when necessary. We have several clients that have implemented technical assessments into their interview process, even at the senior leadership level. On the flip side, we've seen many candidates who want to keep hands-on, even as they move into management positions. A lot of them still enjoy getting their hands dirty, and they are also aware of the trend we're seeing of companies wanting hands-on analytics leaders. Visas. So just last week, it was announced that premium processing for H-1 visas would be resuming on March 12th. So that's great news on that front. Premium processing allows the visa petition process to be shortened significantly by paying a fee. And while it was suspended, there were considerable delays in the hiring process for visa candidates. Data science and analytics in particular are fields with a high number of visa candidates. So without premium processing, it presented a significant challenge to many of our clients and candidates. Companies were really frustrated with this. It was extremely disruptive to their hiring goals. 
one tactic that we'd seen some firms use to circumvent this problem uh, and that Linda Birch actually pointed out in her predictions video for the analytics and data science market was to set up their visa requiring candidates in Canada instead uh, where obtaining an H-1 and eventually citizenship is fairly straightforward. Uh, hopefully premium processing continues, but if not, that is an option for companies to consider. We are continuing to see increasing opportunities for data scientists and analytics professionals in investment analytics and quantitative finance. Opportunities for quantitative professionals in investment analytics are continuing to pick up steam. More companies are integrating machine learning and advanced analytics into their investment and trading strategies. As financial services as a whole take steps further into the data science realm, we predict there will be even more opportunities for those looking to branch into the investment space. In fact, three of the new clients we started working with just this year are in the investment space. Two are real estate investment trusts, and the third is a proprietary trading firm. And interestingly, those jobs are the ones that seem to garner the most interest, maybe because the tools and techniques used in those roles tend to be more cutting edge. One area to watch this year is the increasing buzz around cryptocurrency and blockchain. Although it's too soon to say what will become of opportunities in this fickle industry, we're seeing more companies hop on board and experiment with crypto assets. So this is an area that we are keeping on our radar in 2019. In summary, I must say that I am very excited about the path analytics and data science are taking in the financial services industry. This year is off to a really great start, and I'm looking forward to seeing where we go from here. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Birchworks, we are an executive recruiting firm specializing in quantitative fields like analytics, data science, and marketing research. We're the leading resource for insights about the hiring market and produce comprehensive salary reports every year for our main specialty areas. These reports each contain 30 plus pages of data and can be downloaded for free at birchworks.com slash study. If you're looking to add to your data science and analytics staff, we'd be happy to speak with you and do some brainstorming. We offer contingency and retained services from entry level analysts all the way up to chief analytics officer searches. Just send an email to info at birchworks.com to learn more. And if you're looking to browse for new opportunities, you can check out our targeted job board, which is trafficked by thousands of quantitative professionals in a variety of fields. For more hiring market insights, check out birchworks.com slash blog, where you can find flash surveys on SAS, R, and Python preferences, and what motivates analytics professionals to change jobs as well as advice on resumes, interviews, evaluating job offers, and much more. You can also follow Birchworks across our social media channels to stay up to date on our latest research. At youtube.com slash birchworks, you can find recordings of our other presentations, including SAS, R, or Python, data analysis from an actual data scientist, our career series with executive leadership coach Tim Russmeyer, and recap videos of our salary studies. If you'd like to discuss your hiring plan or see if we have roles that are a fit for your experience, please email info at birchworks.com to start the process. Thank you all for joining us and have a wonderful day. <laughs>